harvest of corn. I'm, I planted Silver Queen this year. I love Silver Queen. And uh, this was just three rows of about 75 foot. And not all of it produced. Some of it didn't make good ears. And I just left them left them in, laying on the ground there. This So I'll, I'll gather all this up and put it in my compost bin. It's good and green right now so it'll start going through the heat and breaking down. And uh, Next year, it'll be soil put back on my garden. Uh, this growed up mess right here is actually my watermelon patch. It got away from me because we got so much rain. Uh, I had it clean and then we started getting all this rain. And I couldn't get in here to clean it and uh, it grew up. But I've actually got a lot of watermelons in here. I've been trying to come in here and at least kick the grass out away from them. So there's a big melon there. Uh, big one down in there. There's several of them in here. So it's hard to see because of all the grass, but won't be long. It'll be time to harvest them too. But now it's time to, as they used to say, shuck and shell the corn. So I'm gonna take it in the barn and I'm gonna dump it out and start shucking. enough for us and we'll I'll shuck this and we'll freeze a lot of it on the cob we'll probably blanch some of it and cut it off the cob and freeze it in bags like that but I'll let you let you join me while we shuck corn Thank you. 
Now that's what a good ear of corn looks like. Good and full, every little kernel is, is full. Um, you can actually eat this right now. It's juicy, it's sweet. I have shucked, I have pulled it off the stalk and just eat it uh, right then. Just clean the silk off of it. You get a little silk in your teeth. but uh, And you might be wondering why I cut the end off or you might see me break the ends off of some. Uh, sometimes you get worms down in the top of your corn in your ears and uh, they'll start eating down on it. And uh, I don't like to spray a lot of poison on my on my corn because I'm going to be eating it too and I don't want to eat all that mess, all them chemicals. So I just let them go. It's usually not much, but usually about that much of it you got to cut off or break off. And it's not it's not always in every ear. Uh, now obviously the longer you leave it on the stalk, the more they're going to be able to eat. And obviously and two, if you leave it on the stalk too long, the corn will dry out. So you want to you want to start harvesting your corn when your silk dies, when it turns brown and starts falling out. Uh, that's when you want to go ahead and start picking it so it's ready. There's a skimpy ear. Now what happens here, from my understanding, is there is a thread of silk for every corner cor kernel of corn. And if if that silk doesn't all get fertilized, then you have this, where you've got kernels pop up fertilized and, and then you're missing spaces where where the silk didn't get completely uh, pollinated. So uh, that nothing wrong with that you can still eat it the ones like that we'll take and blanch them and cut them off the cob and put it in a freezer bag and uh, the good ears will will save a lot of the good ears to uh, leave it on the cob and freeze it Okay, I'm gonna stop the camera right there. I'm just about filled my bucket up. I'm gonna go grab me another bucket, and I, I won't make you watch me shuck the rest of this. I'll come back whenever I get it all done. Got all the corn finished up. Um, it took me a little while, but I got it all shucked, and uh, I had to go in, take a break, eat me a bite of lunch. But let me show you what we ended up with. All right, 
So we got about two and a half five gallon buckets full of corn. Um, so I'll take this in the house and this will have to get washed and brushed to try to get all the silk out of it and then we'll decide what we're going to do, what, of it, what part of it we're going to freeze on the cob and what we're going to blanch and cut off the cob and freeze. But there's my shucks. Now that bucket looks fuller now with just shucks in it than it did when I had the, a whole ear in there. Of course I know that's fluffed up and kind of pack it down, but that's a lot of shucks and that was a lot of a lot of corn to, uh, to shuck. So and there's several pieces there that um, that weren't worth keeping. I just tossed them in there. And this will all go in my compost pile and get broke down and next year it'll be soil on my garden. But anyway, we'll we'll move on to the next step. Well, that's it for the corn harvest. Uh, I'll have to take it in the house and um, get it washed up and brush it, get the silk out of it, and then we'll put up, we'll freeze what we want to keep, and probably we might give some of it away. We got quite a bit there. Um, something about shucking corn just takes me back to my childhood. I remember as a boy, uh, all of us kids, we had to. We had to help out with the harvest. Uh, we, we had to snap and shell beans and shuck corn and, and uh, anything that needed to be done in the garden. And, and that was just, that was just uh, part of our chores. And we didn't fuss about it, we just did it. We were told, hey, it's time to come. Uh, we got some beans here we need to snap or shell. And all, all us kids, my cousins and uh, siblings, we would gather on the porch and we'd sit and do the work and just chit chat and I kind of thought it was fun I don't know if they liked it or not but um, unfortunately kids don't know what that's like for the most part anymore there's a lot, too many kids that, that they don't get away from the uh, TV long enough to to get outdoors and do anything um, I just think that Something there's a lot to be said for growing your own food and then taking the time to harvest it and put it away. It makes you really appreciate it when you're able to pull that out later on and, and uh, enjoy that with the family. And always, of course, always be thankful to God for for what uh, for what He's given us. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't make that corn grow. I planted the seed. I didn't even water it. Um, I put the seed in the ground and I let I let the Lord do the rest. Um, now there was a time when it was kind of dry around here right after I planted that corn and that corn got up about knee high and started tossing out and I thought oh no my corn's not going to do any good. Well then the rains started coming and that corn shot up and you saw when I was out there cutting it uh, a lot of it was as tall as me or taller. I'm six foot two. So, um, we have to depend on the Lord to send the rain. And, and the scripture tells us that the Lord sends the rain on the just and the unjust. Um, so, rain happens everywhere. Um, doesn't have anything to do with whether or not you're righteous. But we need to be. We need to be thankful for it. And uh, we need to be thankful when we can harvest our, our crops and, and enjoy those later on. Uh, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And the things it's talking about in the passage are the things of necessity, food, clothing, and shelter. Anyway, that's, uh, that's all I've got. Uh, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of corn harvest, and I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope it made you feel like you were at home in the South uh, watching me shuck, shuck corn, pick and shuck corn. And uh, maybe someday you can come join me. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Give me a thumbs up and, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. I, I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.